What's going on everybody? This is Afro Think Tank. Today I'm gonna give you a little bit of Pan-African news, you know. You gotta throw that Pan-Africanism in there, you know. So, uh, just a little quick update. I'm not gonna go into a lot of details. There's a lot of uh, other YouTubers that's dropping details right now about all the situations happening. But I'll just give you a small little brief overview for those who are, you know, kind of paying attention or waiting to, you know, wait and see what's happening over there. So right now, Niger, Bikini Fasa in, in Mali, right? They have formed their own, which you were basically an African equivalent to uh, United Nations, right? They have a security pact that's like NATO, right? And they also are going to be one country. All three countries have decided they're going to move their governments towards becoming one big country. This is very, very significant because the reason why Europe chops Africa and Asia up into small all these small countries is because when you have a really small country even if they have a lot of resources they don't have enough people power and they can't generate enough money to um, to really fight back against what's happening for them like like you see Benin and Togo they're too small to do anything right so unless Benin and Togo decide to join with their cousins you know the, the, the company country countries next to them they're always going to be rel they're only going to be dictated to they're always going to be the little man on a, getting pushed around and, unless somebody feels bad for them right so bikini fa somali and um now they decided they're done right so they're completely getting the rank getting rid of the cf frank right so they're not going to be using the france uh financial institutions as their currency they're going to have one currency between all three country it's gonna take a while for all three countries to become one but listen whatever the name of that country is is gonna be massively powerful because with all three of them countries combined it makes one massive resource rich military um, powerful country right they have a all together they got a decent military nobody's gonna mess with them right they have all the reason they have everything they need they have all, all the intelligence they need they're making major moves unapologetically and they're getting support from various other African countries to do the same thing. Uh, Swaziland is no longer Swaziland. I forgot how to say it. Swetsi, I, I forgot, let me, not, let me not ruin it, but they have their own name. So they got rid of that European name of Swaziland and they, they have their own um, traditional name. They're going by the kingdom of you know, Swaziland now, Swazi something, I forgot. South Africa soon, more than likely, will be changing their name to their original name. Um, I forgot what it was. It starts with N or A. Nez, ne, ah, man, I swear to God. You know, being an African American over here trying to pronounce African names after being, you know, not being taught how to use my big ass lips to pronounce these words, you know, it makes it, it's kind of difficult, but, you know, I've been trying. You know, that's something that us black folks got to try to start to pronounce words properly, especially African, put some respect on uh, African names, you know, and I'm all about that. But South Africa soon, once. Hopefully, I, I hope Julia Melina get up in there eventually. EFF finally takes over the youth because the EFF represents the youth in the future of South Africa. Everybody else, them, they the old geezers, right? Right, so so once they take over, I think one of the first things he says is going to change the name, which is great because South Africa is a destination. That's not a goddamn name. That's some. That's that's like a most, one of the most disrespectful words. South Africa. Like, we going to name me a destination because that's all it was for them was a destination. Right now, there are a uh, white separatist group that's trying to make their own state in South Af South Africa. That's obviously not going to goddamn happen. White people don't really have the power they used to have in these African countries as they used to. I mean, they still have hold significant power because some of, they do own a lot of stuff. But once legislation, once different governments that actually has progressive uh, progressive ideas and actually wants to legislate and do something for their people, they'll just change the laws to make it so the thing that used to be the thing is no longer the thing. So. Uh, those boars, the time is coming up for them guys. What else is happening? Oh, Nigeria, unfortunately, in the north, they accidentally did a drone strike and killed some innocent people in a refugee camp. Apparently, this is an issue that they've been doing in the north. Uh, people don't really pay attention to a lot, but Nigeria has a robust military, actually. Nigeria has a robust, well-trained, well, yeah, well-trained military. Right, they're not always equipped with the greatest equipment, you know, depending on who's in charge. They get the great. No, let's keep in mind they have good equipment, but the corruption is so. It's to me so the corruption is their type of corruption in Nigeria is so bad it hinders the entire country. 
these old men, we're probably gonna have, Oprah once said it once, they're just gonna have to die. Just gonna wait for these old people to die because these old uncles don't wanna get out the way and let the youth take over the country. Or the youth is gonna have to just find some particular fortitude and take it. But they tried last time to do it, the election, you know, they tried it, they're a little deflated right now, I understand because the election got stolen by, by you know who, you know, you know how it go, you know. Hey, we feel the same pain here, right? We see what the Democrats are doing over here. They won't allow anybody to run against old ass Joe Biden who, that dude can't even fucking walk, like it's ridiculous. We got two old crusty ass, dying, mentally impaired white dudes and it's like, out of all the people in this country, that's all we got. That's our two choices. We can't do no better than that. It's just sad. It's just the last generation. These, these elders, these guys that have been in politics for the last 30, 40 years, they have done nothing but kill, murder, and destroy the earth. And it's time for the era of these old people in every single country. In every single, in, in China, in, in, in India, in Asia, in America. It's time for these old fuckers to die. Because these old fuckers have destroyed the planet. They, they, they're, they're not, they're not um, civilized. They're not advanced thinkers. They, they don't do anything but create weapons of mass destruction to kill each other. And they don't care about the future because as long as their old ass pockets is full, because I guess they think they're gonna be able to take that shit with, with them when they go to, you know, when they go wherever the hell they think they're going. But that's what it seemed like. They don't want to save nothing for their grandkids and none of that shit. So we just gotta wait for these guys to have heart attacks and strokes and shit and, and wait for the new crop to just naturally take over because these old fuckers is just really fucking up the entire planet. Like seriously, right? I mean, there's some good old ones out there. Let's not, it's just that the ones that, that that's in charge, the ones with the power of them old fuckers, they just need to die. That's just, that's just, un, that's just, they just gotta die. They got a few more years, you know, you know they, they, they can't hang on but so long. They, if you look at all the old people, right? All these, pop, they're so old guys. Like they can't even hold on. Like I be looking at them I'm like, what? future are you fighting for because you don't have a few you've lived your entire life right but you're fucking up everybody else's future for what some fucking medieval fucking 19th century shit that nobody gives a fuck about right other than these old fuckers right so anyway uh i just think the most the most significant thing is bikini fossa uh molly and niger uh niger will become one country i'm excited for it i just wish that nigeria politicians had a less adversarial. I wish there were camps being developed like this. I wish there was a, uh, a better way to unify, especially since that new massive, major, humongous country is gonna be Nigeria's neighbor and, and competitor. So hopefully Nigeria would be able to take the reins, the youth, the competent politicians and the, and the organizations who are fighting right now to, you know, at least hold on to the structure until they can get these corrupt criminals out of office and then they can take over and have a a good governance hopefully you take over and they can unify with their brothers and sisters on the other side we can lift these visas and we can get get to work uh uganda uganda because of their policies america has revoked the visa for ugandans so if you in uganda or if you're ugandan you can't uh, apparently you can't come to america right now right that's the punishment because of human 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 rights violations which is a fucking which is the stupidest shit seeing how america is like literally the terrorist on the planet right terrorism like this we are the world sponsor of terrorism we kill murder destroy and indiscriminately just make life a living hell for so many different groups of people in the country and outside of the country yet yeah, we got the nerve to talk about some fucking human rights goddamn shit that's why we blah 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 but i don't think uganda gives a fuck because I think Uganda, what they're gonna do is all, all, the, all the, see every, everything the white Western world is doing to try to punish Africa the way they used to do before, it's not working anymore. Cause Africa don't give a fuck. They're not scared anymore. Except for Malawi. I don't know what the fuck's up with that. That's super coon. That motherfucker, bro. Like, I mean, but you know, he about a thousand years old anyway. And I'm sure he saw some fucking German, British motherfucker put him up there or some, some, somehow, somehow he's one of them. You know how it go. But. Uganda probably don't give a fuck, cause you know what? When the other African countries markets and they open up their visa and they they uh, they drop their visa restrictions, none of them African countries gonna need shit from America. To be honest, I mean at this point we'll get our intellectual knowledge from other countries like Turkey, like China, you know, like other European countries that want to play ball properly. We'll get our intellectual knowledge from there. We'll get our particulars from there, and we'll build from that point, right? Uh, markets, we don't need anybody else's economy because. 
The black economy by itself, if it paid attention to itself, is the only thing itself needs, right? So, but I see them. The eyes are opening on Africa. Africa is still making their moves. They're not afraid of Europe no more, except for Malawi. Uh, Cause he got dude got sixty million dollars to send his his poorest people to go fucking pick fruit in Israel while there's a whole fucking genocide going on. Which is, I swear, the the, the lack of give a fuck that these so-called leaders have for their own people is just amaze me. How they're able to sleep at night, but demons sleep very well at night after eating babies. So I mean, I guess that's what it is. But anyway, just want to give y'all a quick update what's happening in Africa. You know, a lot of moving parts. A lot of a lot of uh, leaders are calling each other out for the bullshit. It's gonna take a while for all this shit to pan out because nothing happens overnight. Like we didn't get subjugated overnight. We didn't we didn't build the wealth for the Western world overnight, and we're not gonna liberate ourselves overnight. So we can't expect an Instagram style recovery, right? This is not a movie. This is not we. we it's not a hour and thirty minutes where we know in an hour and thirty in hour and thirty minutes. We're gonna have a good ending. This is a long drawn out eight series Netflix original. All right, one of them type shits. So all right, it's gonna take a while, but I'm glad the momentum is moving. I'm glad black people are making the moves they need to make in their various countries for the most part without giving a fuck about what the white people got to say or what they want to do. Because at the end of the day, they need us. We don't need them, and we are now realizing that we don't need them. And they know, and we know that they need us. We know that one Europe, Europe. You don't got no resources. They need us. And before they would put us on our knees and take our shit. But before you, but before, you know, as time goes on, they're gonna be the ones on their knees begging for our shit. And depending on how they come, that's whether they're gonna get some of it or not. Anyway, that's all I got to say. Afro Think Tank, learn something, teach something. I'm out.